Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy, and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for the week of November 26th through December 2nd. Let's get started. Sales have been really great for fourth quarter. We actually made the decision to begin offering free returns and that seemed to really work to bump up our sales, but we have also seen an increase in returns. So I don't know that I can attribute that fully to the fact that we're offering free returns because several of the returns that we've gotten are on items that we didn't necessarily add free returns to. So I don't know that there's a correlation to offering free returns. I think it's just that we're selling more and in turn we are having more returns. And I also think it's just the nature of the season. People are shopping more and maybe having some regrets about the items that they're buying, but we've definitely seen an uptick in the number of returns that we have had. I checked our percentage of returns and before we uh, before fourth quarter, our return percentage was 2% and it's currently at 2.9%. So it hasn't gone up like really significantly, but it has ticked up just a tiny little bit. So that's something we'll continue to watch and, you know, consider whether or not offering free returns is having a real negative impact on our business. But right now I would say it's having a positive impact. So we're going to stick with that. So let's dive right into sales. The first thing that we sold was a pair of women's Michael Kors jeans. They were a dark wash and they had white stitching on them. We picked these up in the Goodwill bins. They sold for our full asking price of $23.99. We had paid just 92 cents for those. Next up was a women's chambray button up shirt. It had like Christmas embroidery on it. It was a, it seemed to be vintage, but I wasn't 100% sure on that. We paid $1 for that at a garage sale and it sold for our full asking price of $24.99. Next up was a really good pickup that we had from the Bins Bingo trip to the Goodwill Bins. This was the Masters Peter Millar Golf Pullover. We picked this up for just $1.18. Everything from our Bins Bingo trip, we averaged out our cost at $1.18 on. And this sold very quickly for a whopping $169.98 on offer to buyer. Peter Millar Masters golf items, golf clothing items are a definite bolo. They all sell for in the hundreds of dollars. So if you ever see any Peter Millar Masters items, those are definitely a pickup. I'll show you what the tag looks like right here so you can know what to look for. But definite bolo item. If you ever see it, grab it. Oh, and if you have not checked out our Bins Bingo video, I will link it up here and in the description box below. You can go check that out and you can check out all of the other Bins Bingo participants videos. This is a collaboration we did with Bolo Buddies where we played Bins Bingo and tried to find all of the different bingo items that she had put on a bingo card. It was super fun and definitely worth checking out our video and all of the other participants videos. All right, next up was a 2021 Brahms Kids Meal toy. This was a super wide finger puppet. This we also got in the Goodwill bins, but at, on a different visit. This we picked up for 67 cents and it sold on our full asking price of $8.99. And we got positive feedback on that. Okay, next up was the Vintage Inesco Precious Moments Sugar Town Holiday Express train set. We had picked this up in an estate sale for $20. We actually sold this previously, and unfortunately, it was returned previously to us by another buyer. And you may have seen in our previous video that when it was returned by the other buyer, um, I was just disappointed in that other buyer because she had expressed to us that she thought we had misrepresented the item in our listing, which we had not. We had very clearly stated that the box was in 
had significant wear and was in bad condition. And I think she had buyer's remorse and kind of tried to put off the blame onto us. And I felt like she had just kind of tried to put her regret off onto us by saying that she thought that we had misrepresented the item. And I thought that the way she did it was not very appropriate. And, you know, it was just the way she handled it, I felt was disappointing to me. I just feel like this item is cursed. <laughs> and it, what, we did have another return open on this one. This buyer was actually very nice about it. Uh, this was a husband who had purchased it for his wife. And he said that there was nothing wrong with it. He just said that his wife did not like it and they wanted to return it. Did not say that there was anything wrong with it. But we are like getting really close to be to being in the hole on this one because it's just a very expensive item to ship. So what we've decided to do when we get this item back, and actually we did, we have gotten it back now. So now that we've gotten this item back a second time, we have decided that we are just gonna part it out. Because at this point, like for us to ship it out again and then risk it coming back a third time, because this item is cursed, I'm telling y'all, this item is cursed. We are just going to sell it as parts only, not have, not worry about the box at all because the box does have significant damage and maybe that's the thing that's turning buyers off. Even though we're disclosing it, we're just going to sell it with, you know, maybe part out the tracks and then part out and maybe do the train and we're not exactly sure how we're going to do it. It's obviously too late now to sell the train for this Christmas. So we're just gonna worry about getting this ready for next Christmas. So this precious moment, Sugar Town train <laughs> just does not wanna be sold and stay gone. I'm not sure what the deal is with it, but very frustrated about it. Okay, so next up it was a pair of two, My Life As Replacement Miniature Cola Drinks. And they had gone with a miniature um, vending machine for the My Life As 18 inch dolls that come from Walmart. So these are like the American Girl doll version that comes from Walmart. And these were like little miniature cola cans that went into that vending machine. I had gotten these from a um, big bag of 18 inch doll items that I had bought from someone on Facebook Marketplace. I paid 67 cents for these and they sold on best offer for $7.50. Next up was a Circo Girls Purple Seamless Racerback Sports Bra. This belonged to my daughter and it sold for $8.78 on offer to buyer. Next up was a 2020 Squeezable snowy seal plush stress ball toy. It was pretty small. It was like this big. We had gotten this in the Goodwill bins. We paid 92 cents for that and it sold on full asking price minus a plush discount that we had running this particular month for $11.69. Next up was a vintage three ounce bottle of men's Aramis spray cologne. And it was about halfway full. We had gotten this at an estate sale. We paid $5 for it and it sold on best offer for $22. We did get positive feedback on that. I saw um, on Bolo Buddy's channel just yesterday that she had done a segment regarding one of her followers who had gotten a Vero violation and a three day suspension for selling cologne or perfume in the collectibles category, which is where we sell our vintage cologne and perfume. And they had received a Vero violation for selling that. And I actually reached out to eBay directly about this and asked, and I had to reach out to them twice because they didn't answer me the first time. I reached out to them through eBay for business on Facebook. And the response I got back was that it is not allowed. So I'm not sure if this is new, if they've changed their policy, what's going on, because 
We've been selling cologne and perfume in that category for a very, very, very long time and have never had any issues. And I honestly, just like Courtney said on her channel, I am not sure why this would be an issue be because this is, we're talking about spray cologne here. And just like Courtney said, this is something that would have never come into contact with the human body. It's not like, you know, this would be something that would have a dauber on it that you would wipe onto the human skin and then place the dauber back into the bottle and, you know, would then have skin cells on it. I'm just so confused why eBay would have this policy and would enforce it. It's such a draconian policy. I, I just don't understand it, but I'm kind of wishy-washy on what I'm going to do here. I mean, I do not want to get a suspension, obviously, but I guess I'm going to make a decision by the end of this week. I'm waiting to see, you know, Courtney had said in her video, please somebody, please, if anybody else has received a suspension or a Vera violation for selling cologne or perfume in the collectibles category to let her know. And I guess what I'm hoping for is that we'll hear back from, from some folks on that. And if someone has indeed received a Vero violation or a notification from eBay about that, and we have some corroboration of this, then definitely I'm going to take these listings down and just list them on Mercari or Poshmark or on another platform. But if not, then, you know, I guess I'm just not sure. I mean, eBay did verify that, but it just seems so crazy to me that they would have this policy in place. And also people have heard varying accounts from eBay reps. So if you have had a violation from eBay in this category, let us know in the comments below because there is lot there are lots of questions out there from sellers. And I also know that this would affect sellers and buyers equally. I mean, there are lots of people who buy used cologne on eBay. It is a great resource for people who buy cologne that has been discontinued. And so this would be a loss for the eBay community at large. And, and also eBay, if you're watching any of these videos, what is up? I mean, this is not something that would be risky to people in the community when you're spraying something onto your body. It just doesn't make any sense. So, you know, just, you know, let's think about that. <laughs> anyway, okay, we'll move on. Next up was a two pack of, it was called Way to Celebrate, which I think might be sold at Target. These were yellow and pink light up spiky footballs. So you would throw them and when you would catch them, they would blink and, and light up. We found these in the Goodwill bins. I'm not sure why we picked them up, I guess, because they were new in the package, but they did sell. We had paid 92 cents for those and they sold for $6 and we got positive feedback on them. So, you know, you never know what's gonna sell. Next up was a collector's suite of three art prints. They were signed limited edition prints with certificates of authenticity and they had a portfolio they, that they went in. These were by the artist Larry Dyke. These sold for $47.18 on offer to buyer. And um, these came from the other business that we own, which is a custom picture frame shop. We got positive feedback on those as well. The next two sales were both of these hip hop pimp chain dollar sign pendant necklaces um, that would be used as like a costume or, you know, some kind of joke thing. <laughs> we got these at a garage sale. They had a big, bag full of them probably left over from a party. These each sold to two different buyers, but each sold for $7.19, which was our full asking price minus a discount we had running on jewelry or something this particular month. And we had paid 43 cents a piece for those. Next up was a vintage gold tone and white Camp Archery Association pen or pin back. This was something that was from like the Junior Olympic Archery Program. And we had found this in a big box of pins and patches that were all related to this same um, archery club. And it came from an estate sale. We had paid $5 for the entire box, but there was so much stuff in that box that when we broke down our cost of goods on each item, it 
broke down to just three cents each item. So we had paid just three cents for this particular pen and it sold for a full asking price of $12.99. These pens and patches are not moving very fast, but they take up hardly any space and we've already made our money back uh, at least two or three times over on this. So probably even more than that. I don't know, I'd have to do the math, but it is definitely worth it. I'm not gonna change anything about the way we have this listed at this point. We're just gonna keep selling them slowly because they're not taking up any space and people will eventually come along and pick them up. Next up was something that belonged to my husband and we've had it listed for a very, very long time, but I ended it and did sell similar and then it sold. This was a Samsonite soft side laptop messenger briefcase and it sold for $22 even on best offer and we got positive feedback on that. Next up was a six inch round ornate antique gold picture frame and it had some Renaissance art in it, some Renaissance style art in it, but it was missing the glass. It looked like the glass had been broken out of it. It probably used to have some of that like convex bubble glass in it, but it that got broken out. We found the, this in the Goodwill bins and I picked it up because any kind of oval or round picture frames people will typically buy. I, I know from my own experience owning a picture frame shop that round and oval picture frames are prohibitively expensive. We don't make them in our picture frame shop because they have to be like custom made on specialized equipment that we don't even have. We actually farm those jobs out to a company in Canada. It's so specialized that there's like really only one company that I even know of that does it. And so most of the uh, round and oval picture frames that people have are, are vintage because they're so hard to come by. So if you ever see a round or oval picture frame at a garage sale or anywhere, pick it up because you can get good money for it. And they sell very, very fast. They have a great sell through rate. This one sold for $14.99. Like I said, it was missing the glass. So that did make it not sell very well. And also it was very small. It was only like this big, but it sold immediately. And we had paid just $1.18 for that. We got that during our Ben's bingo trip. Next up was an Xbox 360 rock band Fender Stratocaster guitar. We didn't have the dongle for it and it was untested. We could see that it powered on, but we did not know if any of the other functions of it worked. And we listed it as that. You can see that it has in the title untested. And then within the listing, I said, this item is being sold as is untested. And I listed it as no returns. We also sold that item at a discounted rate compared to other items similar to this. And then I also accepted a discounted best offer of $47 on that. We had gotten this at a garage sale and we paid $3 for it. Unfortunately, we had a return <laughs> opened on this item and the buyer said that it didn't work, that it like there was one particular function of it that didn't work. And I thought long and hard when I got that return opened and I thought, you know, this is very frustrating to me because I was extremely clear in my listing that it was sold as is, that it was untested, and that, and we had sold this at a discounted rate. I just felt like it was, that, that it was unfair. You know, they were, they received a really good deal on this item and that was in order for them to take the risk of buying an as is item. That was the, that was the, trade-off. You get a really good deal on this item, but the deal is, is that you're purchasing an item as is and you're taking a risk and there's no returns. But they wanted to have their cake and eat it too and be able to return it. And of course, eBay says, oh yeah, well, there's, there's, no, there's no such thing as no returns on eBay. So I decided to say, no, I'm not going to accept the return. And I sent the buyer a message and I pled my case and I said exactly what I just said to you. We listed it as no returns. We said that the item was sold as is and untested and we sold it at a discount compared to other items similar. And not on top of that, we accepted an even lower best offer. 
you knew what you were getting into, basically. I mean, I said it much nicer than that, but that's the gist of what I said. The three days expired, and what do you know? eBay sided with the buyer, <laughs> and I have to accept the return. And not only do I have to accept the return, I have to pay for the return. So now the buyer is sending the item back to me. And of course, you know, this is going to be a defect on my account. I just find it to be so unfair, but we'll see what happens. I'll probably also get negative feedback on this, but we'll see what happens with that. We'll let it play out. But this is where we are on this one. I'll keep you guys informed on that. All right, next up is an item from the J. Crew garage sale. This was a J. Crew green and navy Stuart tartan plaid tie neck blouse. This sold for $23.98 on offer to buyer and we paid just $2 for that. Next up was a 26 piece lot of clothing and accessories for 18 inch dolls. So American Girl dolls, My Life as dolls, and um, Our Generation dolls. I had all different brands of stuff and I just compiled everything together and made a huge lot. This is stuff that I had gotten from multiple different places, but primarily from that Facebook marketplace buy that I did. This I paid uh, 67 cents for because when I did that Facebook marketplace buy, I just averaged out my cost of goods based on listings, not based on items. And this lot sold for $21.58 on offer to buyer and we got positive feedback on that. Next up was a vintage realistic eight track stereo cartridge tape recorder deck. We tested it and it worked. We got this at an estate sale. It was the estate sale where we were very rushed running through there. It was run by a realtor and we got really good prices on everything, but I did not write down how much we paid for everything when we left because we were rushing out the door to our daughter's dance recital. And so I did not write everything down, but we do have it on video somewhere. I just need to find that video and figure it out. And we'll have hopefully that footage from that estate sale and we'll be able to have that in video format for you guys. I just need to find it all and get it all organized. But I can tell you that we likely paid less than $10 for this and probably more like $5 for it. But this 8-track tape deck sold for $104.99. So even if we did pay $10 for it, it was still a really good profit. Next up was the Hunchback of Notre Dame clamshell Disney tape. It was um, used and we did test it and it worked. We got this a really long time ago at a garage sale. We bought like an entire huge box of a bunch of VHS and this was in there. It sold for $8.99 and we had paid 57 cents for it. Next up was an Elenco Learn by Doing Electronic Playground and Learning Center. This sold for $26.99, which was our full asking price and we had paid a dollar for it. We got this at the illicit item garage sale, but we don't we don't have us picking this up on video because our battery had died by the time we found this. Next up was a Lucky Brand men's chambray button down shirt. We got this at the Goodwill Bins when we were playing Bins Bingo. This sold for $19.50 on best offer. We had paid $1.18 for it. Unfortunately, it was returned due to a fit issue. We've already gotten it back and we've already relisted it. Next up was a new era men's or adult one size Boston Red Sox embroidered beanie. We got this at a garage sale. We paid a dollar for it and it sold on best offer for $19 even. Next up was one of those airline crew bags. This one was a Fetters blue vinyl travel bag and it was Pan Am and it said flying down to Rio. This we got at a garage sale. We paid just a dollar for it and it sold on best offer for $32 even. Next up was an Odile, which is an anthropology brand. It was a black knee length A-line skirt and it had like some white ribbon trim on it in a geometric pattern. This we got at a thrift store. We paid $3.78 and it sold for our full asking price of $36.99. We did have this listed for quite a while before it sold. 
Next up was a five and a half inch Schleich horse. This one was a retired figure. We got it at an estate sale. I think we got this at the Hoarder estate sale. We paid a dollar for it and it sold on best offer for $15. Next up was a book called Music Appreciation Hour. It was an instructor's manual and it was vintage, I think from 1930 or 1930-31, I think is what it was marked. We got this in the Goodwill bins and it sold for $15.18 on offer to buyer and we had paid just 67 cents for that. Next up was a really nice plush, very high end, oversized faux fur blanket by Hudson's Bay. This was new in the package. This belonged to me, it's a long story how I had come to own it, but it was not something that I needed. I actually have another one exactly like it in a different color that I that I kept. It sold for $69.99, which is our full asking price. Next up was a vintage 1997 Tyco 8-inch plush Sesame Street Jim Henson The Count puppet. No, actually it's not a puppet. It was just a plush Sesame Street The Count. We got this at an estate sale for $1 and it sold on our full asking price, I think minus some kind of promotion for $14.39. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Next up was a lot of three Jane Fonda workout VHS tapes. These sold for $19.99, which was our full asking price, and we had paid 68 cents for these at the thrift store. Next up was a pair of Lucky Brand women's jeans. These we got at a garage sale for just 50 cents, which was a great price, and they sold on full asking price for $22.99. Next up was eight Oneida Limited 1881 Rogers Silver Plate Flirtation ice teaspoons. We got these at the Goodwill bins, plain bins bingo, along with um, all, all the other parts and pieces from this flatware set, but we parted it out and some of them had some damage. These particular ice teaspoons were in really good condition. These sold for $44.98 on offer to buyer and we had paid just $1.18 for those. Next up was a Harry Potter Scenic game. This was complete, but it was not brand new. This sold for $65 even on best offer. We had gotten this at the Goodwill bins quite a while ago, but it did eventually sell and we had paid just 67 cents for that. Next up was a vintage 1998 Dandy plush holiday snowflake teddy bear. It had its original tag on it. This we got in the Goodwill bins for just 67 cents and it sold for $26.99 on our full asking price. Next up was a pair of Arizona Girls Rainbow Side Stripe Capri Leggings. These belonged to my daughter. For some reason, she never ever wore them, so they were brand new with the tags. They sold for $12.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was another item from the Goodwill bins that we had had, I think we might have gotten it just after Christmas last year and then it sold um, right before Christmas this year. So we almost had it a full year. This was a sweet and shimmer green felt Christmas mouse holiday container. So maybe it was like, I don't know, it might've been a little bit too small for this, but maybe the right size to put like Christmas cards in or something. So, you know, it was just a little Christmas box or bin or something like that that you would put on your shelf and it had a Christmas mouse on it. We paid 67 cents for this and it sold on our full asking price for $18.99. Next up was a pair of men's seven jeans. We got these also at the Goodwill bins. We paid $1.50 for these and they sold for our full asking price of $28.99. Next up was a Crown Royal hip flask and it was branded with Crown Royal. We got this at an estate sale. We paid $3.25 for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $14.98. Next up was another item that we got at that Realtor Run estate sale. So I don't know exactly how much we paid for it, but probably $5 or less. This was a Belkin Gray battery backup. Um, it did power on, but the 
battery part of it was needed to be replaced. And that part of it was very, very heavy. So we actually removed that part, which made it a lot cheaper to ship and then disclosed that it had no battery. And we noticed on when we were comping it that they still sold without the battery and they still had a really good sell-through rate without the battery. But if you have one that has the battery still in really good condition, it will sell for significantly higher. Um, and when you power them on, it will the, the machine will tell you whether or not the battery is still in good condition. So it was very easy to test for that part of the, for that functionality of it. So that sold for $32.99 almost immediately. And like I said, we probably paid $5 or less for that. Next up was a genuine OEM Motorola black mini USB AC wall adapter charging cord. We got this at a rummage sale. It was a church rummage sale and they had like a huge box of a whole bunch of different cell phone accessories and power cords and things like that. And I think we got that whole box for like maybe $3 or $5 or something. And we just went through all of it and just listed every single one of them. And they are slow movers, but they sell every once in a while and we got them for so cheap, it was worth it. This sold for $9.99 and we had paid just 26 cents for that. Next up was a pair of my husband's old jeans that he did not want anymore. This was a pair of Arizona men's boot cut jeans. They sold for $33.99 on our full asking price. Next up was a New World translation of the Holy Scriptures Jehovah's Witness Bible. We got this at a thrift store. We paid $1.03 for it and it sold for our full asking price of $14.99. Next up was a World Market enamel holiday mug. We got this in the Goodwill bins. We paid $0.94 cents for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $9.68. Next up was a 17 hook wall mount tie or belt rack. It had a Western horse head design on it. It was, it appeared to be brand new in the box, but I did list it as like new. I can't remember exactly what I said about it, but I did not say that it was brand new because I couldn't tell for sure. We got this at that realtor run estate sale. We paid 25 cents for it and it sold almost immediately for $12.68 on offer to buyer. Next up was another one of the hip hop pimp chain necklaces. This sold for our full asking price of $8.99 and we had paid just 43 cents for that at the garage sale. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a Bosca 1911 Cognac Genuine Leather Front Pocket Executive Wallet with Money Clip. We got this during Ben's Bingo at the Goodwill Ben's. We paid $1.18 for it and it sold for $40.78 on offer to buyer. Next up was a Nike Men's Dry Fit Speed Fly Navy and Yellow U.S. Navy Athletic T-shirt. We got this at an estate sale, actually the same estate sale where we got that Sugartown <laughs> cursed train. This sold for $22 even on best offer and we had paid just $3 for that. Next up was a pair of Wonder Nation girls jeans. These belonged to my daughter and they sold for $16.99. We got positive feedback on those. Next up was the cutest kids Christmas suit. It was called Suitmeister and it was a three piece ugly Christmas suit. It included the pants, the jacket and the tie. We got this at a garage sale for a dollar and it sold on best offer for $30. When we had gotten this at the garage sale, we picked up the jacket and the pants. And um, we had visited a little bit with the people running the garage sale and I had given, they noticed our cameras. We were wearing our, our cameras for YouTube that day and we had given them our business card. And um, after we left, they, they were so nice to text us later that day and say, you forgot the tie for the suit. And so we ran back over to their house to pick up the tie later that day. So it's been a while since we did buy this suit. But if you guys are watching and see this video, thank you so much for letting us know about the tie. We are really, really grateful for that. And we um, really appreciate you letting us know about that and the suit sold. So, and also the buyer was very, very, very happy with that suit. So 
we definitely made a good connection on that. The buyer was super happy to have it and we got some really nice feedback about that. So thank you so much. Next up was a Mattel Disney Pixar plastic Al Oft Goodyear blimp. <laughs> That we got at a thrift store in a big bag of toys. We paid just 18 cents for it. It sold on offer to buyer for $11.98. Next up was a Vanity Planet Ionic Facial Steamer. It was brand new in the box. I got it at a garage sale for $8 and it sold on full asking price for $39.99. Next up was something that took forever to sell, even though we had like practically 20 watchers on it. This was an 11Zs by Anthropology, or that is sold at Anthropology. Women's Brown Wool Blend Ruffle Pea Coat. It was a pretty cute jacket. I can't believe it took so long to sell. We had so much interest on it, but I just could not get it out the door. So finally, I took a low offer on it of $25. We had paid just $4.86 on it, so we still made money on it. I just, eventually I was like, if I get an offer on this coat, I'm going to take it, like a reasonable offer. And I finally got an offer of $25 on it, which was good enough for me. And so we got it out the door and they seemed happy with it. And last, we sold another of the Fisher Price Little People Nativity replacement items. And this was the replacement donkey with a white blanket. There's also a replacement donkey with a yellow blanket. So you have to differentiate the two. This one sold for $9.99, which was our full asking price, and we had paid just 19 cents for that at a thrift store out of a toy bag. Last but not least, I'll go over all of the collectible cards from my husband's personal collection. We did not sell any high value cards this particular week, but we did sell five low value cards, meaning cards valued at $10 or under, for a total dollar value of $11.28. So that wraps up our video for the week of November 26th through December 2nd. If you enjoyed it, let us know by hitting the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing with the notification bell turned on so you can be kept informed of all of our latest content. And maybe consider sticking around for the next video that's gonna pop up over here, and we will see you on the flip side.